Hi, welcome back to Midweek Encouragement. So thankful that you can join us today, and I hope you're having a blessed day. Hey, when you ever watch little kids, I love little kids, they're fun, but uh, we get excited when a baby says mommy for the first time, or baby says daddy for the first time. Their first words, mommy and daddy. Uh, and we celebrate also their first steps. We don't correct them saying, oh, you know, I've seen better first steps than that. No, we uh, applaud them. When they say mommy and daddy, we don't say, no, 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 you didn't say it right. You didn't emphasize this letter correctly. You, you, you didn't do it right. No, we never criticize that. We celebrate it. And so often we can't wait for a child to walk and talk. And then what do we do? We tell them to sit down, be quiet. A child learns their first words from hearing other people use their words. And it's usually those people that they are around often. Our vocabulary is something that we learn from our surroundings. As an adult, we need to be careful of the words that we use around children because sometimes they will repeat them and maybe not in the place we want them to repeat them. And we might get a little bit embarrassed because we've used some words. Our vocabulary can change for the good or bad simply because of the environment that we're around. There's an old saying that says, may my words be soft and sweet for tomorrow. They may be the words that I eat. Words are powerful. Uh, like buttons on the elevator. They're either going to take you up or they're going to take you down. And they maybe take others up. They may take others down. What we speak over our children can be life or death sentences to them. Now listen close to this proverb, Proverbs 18, 21. It says, the tongue has the power of life and death. So as parents, we have to guard our heart so that we may speak the language uh, over them that is spoken by God, our Father. What we say around our children, or even when they are out of our presence, is a reflection of what is in our heart. I I'm not saying everything we say needs to be bubblegum and butterflies. But what we say about others is a reflection of what is in our heart. Matthew 12, uh, starting in verse 36, it says, but I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words, you will be acquitted and by your words, you will be condemned. The Bible warns us to guard our heart because our heart is a wellspring of life. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, is what Jesus said. And if our heart is full of anger, hate, uh, distrust, a lack of self-worth, you know what's going to come out. It's basically garbage in, garbage out. And just as children learn to talk by being around us, what about the language we take in from media? Maybe it's music or television or movies, wherever we get it from. That is what is filling our heart. Is what you are listening to taking you up or taking you down? Is it going to take others up or down? Some say experience is the best teacher. I say other people's experience is a best teacher. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, it says, uh, Do to others as you would have them do to you. So let's think about what we're speaking over our children. If our words can speak life and death over our children, what about the words that we speak towards one another? I've often said the way we speak to each other is a reflection of how we speak to God the Father. Would you repeat the same sentences in front of God the Father if he was standing there? By the way, he is. If we speak poorly about our boss, we are speaking against God the Father because your boss is an earthly authority in your life, just like government officials and the police, your pastor and others are authorities. We are to show them proper respect. Now, I'm thankful that God is usually able to help me control what comes out of my mouth, but there are times I'd like to ask people if that is the same mouth they kiss their spouse with. If we would begin to imagine we are speaking to Jesus as we speak to others, we might rethink our words. If we thought we were talking about Jesus as we talk about other people, it might make us retract some of our words. When we speak to others, we are speaking to the creation of God made in his own image. Sometimes we may be tempted to have uh, sarcastic words. 
But I don't see anywhere in God's word that says sarcasm is appropriate for the children of God. Sarcasm is a reflection of a person's heart and their own insecurities. Sar uh, God's word calls for us to be holy as God is holy. Uh, and, and, and he has set us apart as a nation to be his. Sarcasm comes from a word meaning to tear flesh. Sarcasm is walking in the fruit of the flesh rather than in the fruit of the spirit. It is walking in the fear of man rather than the fear of the Lord. It's the tearing of the flesh of Jesus right out of another individual. And I believe part of the, uh, part of the um, protection of not saying what comes to our mind is a proverb, a passage in Proverbs where it says, if you argue with a fool, you'll become like them. So we need to guard our heart. The Bible also tells us um, that, 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 that in our anger, not to sin. We need to seriously consider the words we speak over our children, over others. One more group. We need to seriously consider and think about the words we're saying over ourselves. When we mess up, we might say, I'm stupid, I'm useless, I I'm a dummy. We also speak death over ourselves when we claim our disabilities, our infirmities over God's abilities. I mean, there are some people that speak more life into their illness than they do into their faith and hope and trust in God the Father. So when I hear somebody put themselves down, I will often say, I do not like it when you speak bad about my friend. My God doesn't make junk. So let's stop putting ourselves down and let's stop putting others down, even in sarcasm. So we, I don't believe that sarcasm reflects the Holy Spirit. I believe a goal of parenting is for my children to speak well of me. No matter how young or how old they are, I want them to speak well of me, especially as they get older. What about how others speak about me when I'm not around? So my challenge to you, ask God the Father to help you speak in love. And if you need some ideas on how to speak in love, commit 1 Corinthians 13 to your heart. It's the love chapter. Love is patient. Love is kind. And keep that in mind so that your love will be kind, your love will be gentle, and so will your words. Remember, you're loved with an everlasting love from the one who loves you the most the one that made love. So let's go be love to one another. Bye-bye.